speech on Europe in Prague by the end of August. Um, the six Balkan states are part of the European Union. They belong into the European Union. They are part of the European family and part of Europe. And this is why I have always come out very strongly in favor of enlarging the European Union to include the states of the Western Balkan. And the so-called Berlin process is very important for the success of EU enlargement. I'm delighted, therefore, uh, to be able to um, welcome today, and I was able to welcome today rather the uh, representatives of the uh, participating states and institutions to the Berlin uh, process. And I was gratified to see that all of the minister presidents of the states of Western Balkans came to Berlin, um, accepted our invitation. This Berlin process um, takes place um, ever since 2014 now for the third time under the um, German uh, championship, so to speak, and we have hosted it, and I'm also very glad that uh, I was able um, to um, have here uh, Prime Minister Idiarama of Albania. He will be hosting the next meeting, and the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, is also present here, as you can see, presenting the success and the results of this um, summit. Um, the development of uh, the Western Balkans and its integration into EU, the EU is central to me. The EU accession is in our interests, and that is all the more important against the background of the brutal war of aggression of Russia against Ukraine. Reforms are necessary for this in the EU itself, but also in the region, in particular as regards rule of law and environmental standards. And for this, it is necessary to bring regional cooperation forward and to settle long smoldering conflicts among these six countries. And an improved regional cooperation of the countries of the Western Balkans is key to speeding up the EU Rapprochement. Ever since 2014, um, the Berlin process uh, gives a very important uh, contribution to this effect, and it has brought together um, the people. Um, it has also increased links um, in the region at all levels, new roads, new interconnectors. Um, in doing so, it has strengthened the economy, has also given a concrete um, contribution towards improving good neighborly relations and reconciliation in the region. And very concretely, uh, what we are talking today is the creation of a common regional market that is compatible with EU rules, is also including all of the, land, the countries of the region. And I congratulate the countries of the Western Balkan that today under the um, auspices of the federal government and the Regional Cooperation Council, free mobility agreements could be signed. Um, and that is a great success for the citizens of the region. And it shows that the six Western Balkan states are serious in trying to co get closer to regional cooperation um, as regards the European Union. Uh, for in this European project, it has always been about going forward together. These three agreements now will make it possible for the citizens of the region to travel, to cross borders just by using their IDs. And um, also there is mutual recognition um, enshrined in uh, one agreement um, of higher education qualifications and professional qualifications. This will, in very concrete terms, improve the life of the individuals in the region and get the region closer together. And on energy, uh, an important uh, agreement, an important declaration has also been signed Sign. The Western Balkan countries um, agree in this um, declaration to work together more closely for more energy and security and also on climate protection measures in order to achieve the 2030 goal. We and the other participants of the Berlin process are going to support the Western Balkan states in the medium and short term and long term, obviously, in order to weather this energy crisis and to focus on renewables. Germany contributes to this um, through the work of its promotional bank, FW, um, in the short term through granting loans of up to 500 million um, in order to weather this acute crisis. And in the medium term, by 2030 through supporting energy transition for the Western Balkans uh, to the tune of 1 billion euros. And all of these issues, we need to work together more closely. This summit has shown that there is a willingness to cooperate and Europe, Germany is going to support this process in the future and uh, will also obviously be willing to host uh, this process again in the future. The EU also supports this process and here in particular um, the European Commission supports this. And we would like to thank the Commission for doing this. And I would like to now hand the floor, um, give the floor over to the Commission President Ursula von der Leyen before 
the next host of the Berlin Process Summit uh, will take the floor. President, the floor is yours. Benya in the driving seat for next year. I know that the Berlin Process continues to be in very good hands. So our aim is very clear. It's the aim to bring our Western Balkan partners as close as possible, as fast as possible. And here we have two tracks. One track of work is, of course, the accession process. There we have made good progress. The Commission has put enlargement back on the table from the very first day of my mandate. We have been securing agreement on a new enlargement methodology that opened up ways not only to deblock decisions, that was very important, but it also brought back credibility to the whole process. Then we have put on the table a substantive economic and investment plan. It brings 30 billion euros of investment to the region, which is overall approximately one-third of the GDP of the whole region. In addition, last year we had the first intergovernmental conference. We had intergovernment conference with Montenegro. We opened one cluster with Serbia, and this year we were very happy that we finally managed to have the first intergovernmental conference with Albania and North Macedonia started the screening process and we made the proposal to Council to give Bosnia and Herzegovina candidate status. I must say um, this progress, which is good progress, dear Edi Rama, was possible because of the progress made in the Western Balkan countries themselves, so it's your success. Indeed, a second track of action is the Berlin process. And here the goal is to deepen our economic integration. And yes, we are facing many fault challenges. Most and foremost, Russia's invasion of Ukraine that marks a geopolitical shift on our continent. But the longer the Russian war lasts, the more determined we are to stand together and to withstand. We know that our investments in the Western Balkans are not only important for a conducive business environment, this is also the case, but that these investments are investments for peace, stability and prosperity of Europe as a whole. Against this backdrop, indeed, we discussed in depth the knock-on effects of the Russian war on energy, and therefore today's declaration on energy security and the green agenda for the Western Balkans mark a very important step. As the Chancellor already said, we are united in the goal of climate neutrality by 2050 and our climate targets by 2030. Now if we look at the immediate crisis, it's important that we synchronize our steps. We are in an energy community. Therefore, in the short term, this means for all of us diversification of energy sources, the reduction of our dependency on Russian fossil fuels, and to keep energy prices in check with joint action. But we are also aware of the fact that unprecedented crises demand or need unprecedented steps and action, and therefore I am pleased to announce that the Commission will put forward a substantial energy support package for the Western Balkans, it's 1 billion euros in grants, and it has two different parts. The first part is 500 million euros in grants as a very immediate financial support for the six Western Balkan countries to put them in a position for uh, the very short term to support vulnerable households and vulnerable businesses. This budget support will be adopted in December and available in January, uh, in other words, very short term. The second part, the other 500 million euros in grants, will be dedicated to investments in energy infrastructure. So these are mainly investments in gas and electricity interconnectors to really have a common grid and interconnection in the region with the European Union. Very important is the emphasis on investments on renewable energy because this gives us independence, it's clean energy, and it creates good jobs at home and, of course, energy efficiency measures. 
In addition, we will strengthen the security of supply by improving and facilitating the access in each other's energy pipelines and storages. This is for the emergency. In case that somebody is in trouble, there is solidarity from all of us. And the European Union and the Western Balkans will harmonize their crisis and emergency plans and measures in a spirit of solidarity and increased mutual resilience. Finally, we are also inviting our partners from the Western Balkans to join us in our European attempt to have a joint procurement platform, so really to develop the strong market power we have if we stick together. And this brings me to the second point, the regional integration. That's the development of the common regional market. It is for us a very important stepping stone towards the EU single market. And indeed, in this regard, I uh, welcome today's signature of the three very important agreements. The freedom of movement is key to both. It's key to the development of the common regional market, of course, but it's also key to the integration of the Western Balkan in the European single market. It's about the people. Be it students, be it professionals, they will bring the region forward. And therefore, the agreement is so important for 18 million people to move freely within the region. Professionals can tap their full potential regardless of where they work. And the professional qualifications, be it of skilled workers, students, researchers, medical doctors, dentists or architects, they will all be recognized throughout the Western Balkans. Very important is also that the national ID cards will be accepted at every border. So these measures will not only boost intra-regional travel in the Western Balkans, but it will also strengthen personal and cultural bonds between the people of the region. And in the very end, it's always the same good old story that has always been at the heart of the European project. It's enhanced cooperation and harmonization that bring peace and prosperity to all. So we should use every opportunity to get closer with our best Western Balkan friends. And thank you once more for a very good Berlin process. Thank you very much. And I must say that everyone uh, from the region was very pleased uh, to be here today in Berlin, eight years after the Berlin process was launched in this very same building. And uh, I must also say that uh, Angela Merkel was proven right, because uh, if today we have a united region in a very complicated moment of history for all Europe and for the whole Euro-Atlantic uh, community, the public uh, secret is the Berlin process. When we gathered here for the first time, we hadn't met each other for centuries. And uh, nowadays, this is very, very much what we all like to do. And I would like to really uh, thank wholeheartedly Chancellor Scholz for uh, his engagement, for the great hospitality, for the outstanding German bread, and uh, of course, uh, last but not least, for trusting Albania and myself to host the next uh, Berlin Process Summit in our wonderful country. And uh, I very much hope that uh, what was discussed today and taken carefully uh, in the notes of the Chancellery. We'll uh, see uh, progress in the next uh, summit in Tirana, starting from the energy crisis, where uh, we feel that we are not left aside, we are not alone, because uh, just a few days ago, um, the President of the European Commission, 
Ursula uh, made a tour in the Balkans and uh, she didn't just bring nice words of solidarity but also uh, very important financial support, uh, important to start with, not to end with, of course. Uh, and uh, in the same time, we are looking forward to see progress in the interconnectivity. As the Chancellor pointed out very, very clearly, it's not about connecting our own infrastructure, highways in our countries, but it's about connecting the region and Europe with the region and vice versa. Uh, we hope to see progress in the digital sphere because these were the three main pillars of the Berlin process since day one, energy, uh, interconnectivity and digital, but today we are also facing the challenge of cybersecurity and it was discussed. And uh, of course uh, we want to see things move in the right direction for our young people. We have uh, raised again the issue of how we can faster integrate with the European uh, higher education system, our universities, and uh, also of, uh, of, of, of on how we can uh, have more uh, presence from uh, uh, Germany and other uh, EU uh, well-developed countries through their private sector and not just uh, uh, public funding. Uh, to end with my, uh, I hope, short uh, um, introduction, I want to say that uh, it's very important what we signed today. Uh, I cannot prevent myself to underline that these agreements were three agreements that we were looking forward since two or three years. They were blocked. The Chancellery, uh, the Chancellor, his team uh, really worked very hard together with uh, our people to convince everyone to sign. And it's a great, great news that uh, we had today three important signatures that we already had in the Open Balkan framework. So it's very important that uh, now everyone is uh, included in this, uh, in this framework of um, uh, the three uh, agreements. Of course, uh, sounds a bit, a bit uh, weird or, or, or a bit uh, alienating for the people of Kosovo that while they made another step through the government to sign this uh, free movement with ID cards can't yet move freely uh, as everyone else in the region when it comes to uh, the European Union. And I very much hope that this will be solved sooner more than later. So looking forward to host uh, everyone next year in Tirana and uh, being very, very happy that we will host the Chancellor and others next month in Tirana again, we were uh, laughing a bit because everyone was talking about uh, becoming a hub of energy, but apparently Tirana is becoming a hub of summits. Elia Zotka, Television Shqiptar, Klan. Pozitë si kancelari të flasë në gjuhën time, një pjëtë përbashkët për kancelarin dhe përbashkët. I prefer to speak in my language. Um, there's a, a question I would like to address to both the Chancellor and the Prime Minister. Today, an agreement was signed for uh, freedom of movement or, and also uh, one for uh, professional qualifications. The doctors, however, see their future in Germany. Uh, Prime Minister Rana, you quite often spoke about you quite often demanded from the countries of the European Union that they give back uh, on these investments um, 
these are, after all, investments uh, that were taken um, into the future qualifications of uh, people with, uh, from the Albanian taxpayer. So we would like to get something back. Is there a possibility, a mechanism um, for how to do this? And um, the spokesperson of the British government uh, today reacted to your declaration yesterday. How do you see this? Uh, one of the main Dutch, English, free, the free movement of labor is, uh, is one of the main advantages of the European Union. So all that are going to join the Union are willing to accept this concept of free movement of labor, which we have now for more than 400 million people, and if you look to the workforce, 220 million. And if you look at it, it works more or less quite well. Not. Uh, because of the movement to some countries. But if you go to the details, you see that it is very easy for young people and for all the others just to take the decision to, to do it for some years in another country. And doing this and going back is something that is uh, enlarging the experiences and uh, the advantages of many, many people. And so I'm very sure that free movement of labor is a very good concept for all of us. Yes, you are right saying that brain drain is a problem for countries looking at the different uh, uh, wages you have in, in the member states of the European Union, and this is even so for all those countries that are already member. But if you look to it, you see many of them going back later in their lives, and then the country is profiting from the experiences that they uh, reached abroad. And if you look, for instance, to Germany, you will find many Germans all over Europe doing their jobs, going there for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years, sometimes going back, sometimes not. So this is, this is something which is, in a way, already something that works for all. The other question is, what can we do that people like to stay in their country? And this is the only answer of this is hope. If we are making it very good in developing the countries, creating a better economic atmosphere, making feasible that good jobs and good future is feasible in all the member states of the European Union and those countries that are willing to join the Union, I think this is the best answer to this problem. Yes. Ah. So indeed, um, um, we, if you look over time for free movement of labour and the Chancellor has already said how beneficial it is for all sides, that you see we have had this process of put partial brain drain in any country that was in the accession process. And the closer you come to accession, the less uh, strong this effect is. The solution is in raising the living standards. That's our common goal. But they are also below that one because this takes time. And this is, of course, for uh, families, for example, in the Western Balkans who want to keep their young people uh, close to them, a difficult question if you see the time dimension. Um, there are quite good examples uh, where you have agreements cross-border, for example, for medical doctors to have an exchange for a few years and then to come back and to deliver on the experience that is gained. And there are many uh, very good examples for that, so this is something we can, can learn on. And as you, Prime Minister, raised the question of universities and cooperation, and of course in universities are, for example, also medical faculties. Um, this might be a topic that we should uh, develop in depth. Uh, also, for example, Erasmus, so the movement of students um, within the Western Balkans and the European Union. We have started work on that, but it could be a very interesting point and deliverable for the Western Balkans Summit to come with solutions and to come with proposals on this, for you, so important question. Thank you. Uh, I'm not aware what uh, the spokesman of the British government said today, but uh, um, I think that... Uh, this country here is a great example that uh, Britain and the British government should look into. Germany had the same problem, similar, uh, some years ago, 
when uh, with the big wave of the refugee crisis uh, also people from our region and also people from Albania joined and uh, I never heard any German politician let alone government minister talk about invasion and uh, I never heard any German politician let alone government minister or interior minister talk uh, about uh, uh, Albanians uh, being uh, uh, criminals and bringing criminals but I saw uh, a government that was very interested to address the issue with dignity and respect for uh, the Albanian people and uh, to move forward concretely by first uh, putting Albania in the countries of safe origin, tightening up the system of uh, applications, and practically ending that moment of um, somehow uh, uh, turbulence um, in the most uh, dignified and in the most uh, respectful way. Uh, so uh, instead of uh, fueling a crazy narrative of uh, invaders and gangsters to cover up for totally failed policies on uh, borders and on crime, the British uh, representatives uh, need to come to Germany and learn quick and uh, fix their, their own problems. We are not uh, here I mean here in Albania to fix the problems they have in, uh, in Britain. And secondly, I have to, to remind that uh, our people, until they reach France, they are totally legal. So if there is a problem in the channel between France and Britain, they have to work with each other and to find a way to solve it. I know Brexit has made it more difficult but uh, this was a decision of the British people, not of the Albanian or of the French people. And at the end, uh, we are very much happy to cooperate, to do whatever we can on our side, uh, but we'll never ever accept this kind of rhetoric. Albanians in Britain are a great community, fully integrated. 70% of them, and they are not millions, they are just uh, 140,000, and for 140,000 people of another community, Germany would, never, would, would not even count, just to be, to be concrete. But 70% of them left Greece and left Italy and didn't leave Albania. So uh, uh, there are, there are 1,200 business leaders, Albanians. There are very uh, well-respected academics and so on and so further. And when it comes to uh, criminals, in the British uh, jails, the number is uh, less than 1%. So to single out the community and to talk about gangsters and about uh, criminals doesn't sound really uh, something that is very British. It sounds more like uh, screams from a madhouse. Anila Schuka, Deutsche Welle. Eine Frage an Bundes uh, Anila Schuka from Deutsche Welle. A question addressed to Bund Federal Chancellor Scholz. You said the conflicts in the Balkan regions are supposed to be settled, and they need to be settled also if we look at this crossroads, uh, this watershed moment that we experience right now. Germany and France tabled a uh, proposal to solve the Kosovo uh, question, the, sort of the normalization between um, Serbia and Kosovo. So. My question is, how urgent is an agreement, in your view, between Kosovo and Serbia? And when do you expect this to happen? And if we still have time for a short question um, addressed to the three of you. Yesterday, um, during the Civil Society Forum, um, a wish was voiced to also have a timetable for enlargement. How realistic, how desirable is this? Thank you very much uh, 
for the question. Thank you very much for the question. It is true. The bilateral conflicts that undoubtedly exist um, between certain member states of the Western Balkans need to be settled. They need to be overcome. So it's a good thing uh, to do. Um, be able to do this. Uh, this year, we've already made enormous progress, for example, as regards the debate between Bulgaria and North Macedonia. The President um, already uh, spoke uh, about um, a success of this meeting. Um, processes that have taken place with Albania and North Macedonia um, looking ahead towards a possible EU accession and for Serbia and Kosovo this also applies an agreement must be reached we the French government and also the European Commission are trying our utmost to make this possible we are very actively involved in talks with both parties, and we hope that very soon we will come to a process where both governments will move forward and an understanding can be reached. That is something for which we need to have patience, and obviously we need to put a lot of effort into it. And we hope that very soon we'll see a positive outcome. As regards enlargement, I think the best thing would be for the Commission President to address that. I would say as fast as possible. Um, the, after all, the decisions of Thessaloniki um, date back 92, 19 years ago. Nobody at the time would have expected it to take so long, so we need to speed up matters. First of all, from the European Commission side, um, I want to emphasize that there's full support for the Franco-German proposal and uh, we integrate that in uh, the dialogue that is so necessary. So we uh, call on both sides um, to move forward on that because this is a bridge that is being built to solve um, a, a problem that can be solved but that is um, uh, in the way of a speedier accession process uh, for the region. What the timetable is concerned, um, the accession process is completely merits-based. So there is no rigid timetable, and that's good. The better a country um, performs in its own interest with uh, investment and reforms, the faster the process goes. But we also have, of course, uh, the other way around, that with um, non-implementation, for example, from reforms or not uh, undergoing reforms, we see a, a slowing down of the process. The modernized um, methodology has as a purpose to speed up the process if there is the willingness uh, to really work hard, for example, on the general questions of the rule of law and uh, the principal values of the European Union. So it gives the opportunity, uh, compared to uh, former times, to really speed up the process and at the moment being, I must say, we, we feel a wind of change going through Europe because of the geopolitical situation. It is of utmost importance to push forward the accession process of the Western Balkan. And here we share the same attitude. Uh, we want our friends to be in the European Union. Uh. I must say, first of all, that uh, the new uh, German and French plan offered to uh, Serbia and Kosovo is uh, really a great opportunity, not just for Serbia and Kosovo, but uh, for the region, for Europe. And uh, I very much hope that uh, both sides will uh, take it very seriously. And uh, both sides will understand that uh, it's time to, to see it also as uh, an important contribution to the whole European uh, architecture of uh, security. On the other hand, when it comes to enlargement, I'm the, the worst person to, to be asked, but in general. But in this case, I want to say that independently from how the enlargement will go, we are now uh, in a completely different level of cooperation with the European Union. And uh, this today is uh, one of the examples. There are other regional initiatives that are important. There is also the continuous uh, 
a path of common uh, summits between the European Union and the Western Balkans. There is a new political community, so uh, the space of uh, dialogue, of cooperation, of uh, mutual understanding and mutual uh, efforts has increased, has been enlarged a lot. Of course, we need to do our own homework to get in the European Union. This will not change and this should not change because the work needed to become a full member is first of all a work that improves our own performance and makes our states functioning democracies uh, at their best. So uh, we don't need uh, discounts and we are not going to ask for discounts. And finally, I want to to say that the uh, Berlin process um, has proven itself uh, so good and so efficient when it comes to the political understanding and when it comes to strengthening this sense of belonging to the same space, being named European Union or being named just Europe. And now it's time to, to push to make it more consistent, more concrete, also to try and give common answers to, to, to questions like uh, brain drain, to questions like uh, better wages, to questions like uh, better quality of life, and so on and so further. Because uh, uh, Germany and the, the big uh, rich countries of uh, Europe will continue to be attractive for uh, our people, as they are for many people. And we can't change that by telling them to, uh, to uh, regress. We have to run and to progress as much as we can with their help. And uh, the great uh, the sensation I have is that uh, there is really a strong, strong will to help. So we can't ask for more. Thank you very much, Chancellor. Thank you, Ursula. And uh, let me finish by saying when we had the the signatures. We were four Albanians, two Germans, and some others. Now there are two Germans, one Albanian. So it's, it's, it, no, Albanians should really understand that we have never, ever been better than today. Of course, there is better in the future. If you like, I will show her picture. Come with me. So.